I just got a message from a fellow Glock enthusiast and he left it on my video titled Make Your Glock Factory Clean and this lucky guy just bought himself his first pistol ever a Glock 21 45 ACP congratulations that is a very very nice gun and I would be proud to have that as my first handgun um, he doesn't want to shoot it until he does uh, basic clean which is a great idea because as you remember from physics class uh, liquids cannot be compressed and you don't want to run a bullet down your bore until you make sure that it doesn't have uh, an excessive amount of oil in it. Um, I know we've, some of us have heard that uh, Glocks are ready to fire right from the factory and that may or may not be true. It probably is true but you want to give it a check anyway and how you do that is you want to remove the magazine first and then you want to clear it which is to look in the chamber and uh, look down the mag well so you know this thing is clear then you let the slide go forward point it in a safe direction means which means a direction that a bullet could actually travel without any uh, harm dry fire now this is what the Glock armors do you put your hand over the top and you bear against this sight here and you just squeeze and when you do it this way you don't move the slide too far because if you move it too far you actually reset the trigger and then it won't work but um so do it like this and then you pull down on the slide lock uh, some people refer to these as two tabs right here they're not actually two tabs the slide lock is a single metal bar that goes across and that actually bears up against the uh, the barrel right there and uh, keeps that from going forward uh, remove your uh, recoil spring assembly take the barrel out of the slide and don't sweat this because it's it's uh, completely idiot proof. There's no way that you could put your Glock together wrong. Um, this gun is dirty because I was out shooting it on Saturday a few days ago. And um, I'm not real diligent about cleaning my Glocks. My other guns that I shot that day got cleaned immediately. You know, my Smith & Wesson revolver and the, the shotgun and all that. But um, my Glocks might go a month without cleaning. <clears throat> And the reason for that is tenifer. This barrel has a, uh, I think it's three mils thick of uh, heat treating. Uh, you could do whatever you want with this barrel. You could soak it for a month in salt water and it's not going to rust. Nothing bad will happen. So I don't really worry about cleaning my Glocks. I don't worry about getting them wet. I could be out in the rain with my Glock and I come home and I don't do anything. Uh, I, I could store this thing in a glass of water and it wouldn't bother me so um, same with the slide that's tenifer treated and it's not the finish this black finish which varies from year to year uh, the tenifer is underneath that finish so when you start getting holster wear here and you see bare metal don't sweat it you don't have to oil it or anything um, it's not gonna rust uh, even in salt water it's not gonna rust but there are a few things you should know about uh, Glocks since this is your first one. Um, for one thing, the factory in their um, armorer's manual talks about the... Here, I've got a, a newer Glock here. This uh, Model 23 uh, hasn't been fired too much kind of cruddy too. Uh, you see right here that that copper colored uh, lubricant that's a high temperature lubricant that Glock uses from the factory and they tell you right in the manual to leave that alone don't clean that out of there uh, leave it in there as long as you possibly can uh, this gun has only been fired uh, a few hundred times it doesn't even have the smile yet where you'll see wear there on the barrel Let's see does this one have it? Yeah 
uh, they refer to this as the Glock Smile and um, so uh, keep that copper lubricant in there as long as you can um, and I'll say this right away so I don't forget it you don't want to get any lubrication down that firing pin channel uh, where the firing pin comes out on the bolt face right there um, when I clean that I just use a dry toothbrush and just get the ash and stuff out of there uh, that way you're not going to have any problems with your extractor and I know, I know I've made videos on how to completely disassemble these and detail clean them and all that honestly you shouldn't do it that often if you start taking your uh, Glock apart uh, every time you use it or even a couple times a month you're actually going to wear out the pin holes on the uh, receiver and your pins might start getting sloppy after you know doing this many many times so I'll show you how to lubricate the thing but uh, first of all before we get to that stage let's do the barrel and at this point I'd like to introduce you to my friend the boar snake this is a uh, handy little item that uh, I believe they even sell them at Walmart they're pretty common it's not going to be hard to find you're not going to have to order it online they cost less than $20 uh, unless they've gone up in the last few years I, I think they were always around 16 or $18 I know they might have hit 20 bucks by now um, I've heard the newer ones actually have the caliber printed on this brass weight here I don't see it on this one um, if you had a brand new Glock you could take your boar snake I like to take the barrel out you don't have to but it's so easy on a Glock why wouldn't you feed it through there from the breech end always clean from the breech you want to protect this uh, critical muzzle crown right here there you'll see there's a slight angle beveled in the muzzle it's called the muzzle crown that's critical because when your bullet emerges from the muzzle if uh, there's any irregularity here it'll actually influence the uh, bullet as it leaves because bullets are still accelerating uh, a certain distance from the barrel when they're heading toward the target and uh, if the gas is venting off one part more than another uh, it's gonna affect your your bullet it might cause some wobble and uh, for long shots your bullet won't get there it, it's more critical in rifles uh, not very critical in handguns but it's proper care to always clean from the breech end for that reason you don't want to wear this part here and usually they're referring to uh, cleaning rods you know rubbing like that so pull your boar snake through and if you had a brand new Glock and you pull that boar snake through one pull that's all you need that's all you'd have to do if you don't have a boar snake you could either use your uh, cleaning rod that came with your Glock which most people just uh, leave these in the box they don't mess with them uh, because they've got the nylon bristles um, which aren't really all that effective uh, brass works a lot better but I use this thing it's even handier than a boar snake to me because I'll pop the barrel out you know if I if I shoot a lot of guns and I'm <laughs> I don't want to spend all night cleaning guns it's just a reality um, I'm gonna knock the the high spots off knock the ash off and I'm gonna take the, the barrel here and I just run it through a few times like this and this is the same patch I leave that on there till it gets pretty grungy that gets the big stuff uh, off the the feed ramp here you can usually see some crud built up on there and then you can take a uh, a toothbrush with a little bit of solvent and for solvent you just pick one um, Poppy's number nine maybe some people don't like using that with Glocks so actually I rarely use solvent what I normally use is the uh, ballast doll and I get the kind that doesn't spray it's kind of thick and I just put a little bit um, in the cap and I'll dip my toothbrush in it or I'll pour some right out on the bench and 
dip into that with the wet brush and uh, that's great for doing the the areas around the uh, breech end of your barrel and then you can get the barrel lug right away you're not gonna have to do this on your brand new Glock because it's gonna be real clean but you know I'll bet you you've got an excessive amount of oil when I get new Glocks I notice that they're oiled up pretty good and um, I'll wipe some of that off just wipe it all off and don't worry about putting more on because if it's loaded up and you wipe it there's enough oil on it to fire you don't have to worry you could actually and I don't some people are gonna argue with me on this you could actually run your Glock bone dry and I don't believe that you could wear that gun out if you sold your house and took all the money and bought ammunition and ran it through that Glock you probably wouldn't even wear it out but that's that's opinion and uh, okay so we've got the inside and outside of the barrel clean and wiped down now I'll show you how to lubricate and this isn't my method this is Glock's method which I just happened to adopt and this is right from the uh, Glock Armors manual um, the Glock Armors manual of course talks about the importance of not getting oil in the firing pin channel and they say to use one drop of oil on all four well I'll just read right from I've got it here on my computer it says uh, to properly lubricate your Glock pistol after it has been thoroughly cleaned and dried the following lubrication procedures should be followed using a quality gun oil lubricate the barrel the barrel hood which is this part right here the barrel lug and the inside of the slide where the barrel hood rubs against the slide and they're talking about this part it's real easy to see because you can see where it's worn there and uh, I'll show you how I do it uh, Take only one drop of oil on your finger and rub each slide rail or put one drop of oil on each slide rail cut. Uh, once the slide is replaced on the receiver, after reassembly, the oil drop will be distributed equally along the slide rails. And then there's one more place, but I'm, I'm going to show you that one last because they call it the most important place to oil. So the one drop of oil. I don't put one on each slide reel, that's too much. I put one on my official Glock factory applicator here. And I just go like this. I rub it on each one of these uh, slide reels. It takes about two seconds. You don't have to be picky about it. Then uh, I will do the same thing with. Whoop, there my factory applicator right there that's too much oil I'm gonna actually wipe that out it's hard to see what I'm doing through the viewfinder right there you don't want it dripping you don't want this stuff to get all over inside your safe or inside your gun bag um, and then as far as the barrel um, the only part that you do is I usually put a drop on the barrel lug. I put it on the inside of the lug because that's where the thing rubs on the breech block. It actually goes up and down right there on that. And uh, the hood and then all along the, the barrel here. When I'm cleaning it, I like to uh, use a little extra care right here where the barrel rubs on the slide, the opening in the slide. I like to clean the old oil out of there. And if you want, you can just stick your finger in there and coat that. It's really not necessary because you've already got the barrel which is in contact with that part. All right, now the most important part according to Glock. And I will read again from 
the armorer's manual. Most important is the drop of oil where the connector and the trigger bar meet. This is the connector and this is the trigger bar and that's the location that is to be oiled right there. And you don't want to go crazy with it. You don't want to load it up too much. It's actually hard. I don't even lubricate it in the gun. I usually take that part out and then I don't worry about it during a normal cleaning um, because I'm not taking the oil out that I put in there. Right there. You can see where it rubs there. That's where you want the oil. And from the factory this thing's already going to be oiled up good I and mean, I wouldn't even give it a thought. And uh, that's it for lubrication. As far as uh, more on cleaning and what you can use, you might want to get a set of these uh, brass cleaning jags and don't just buy one, just get a whole set right away because it's nice to have them all together like this. Um, you've got one gun, you're going to absolutely like it and you're going to get more guns. Everybody does. I don't think there's any exceptions to that. And uh, these have each caliber covered here. And uh, for this one, we're going to use the 45. The only one this doesn't have is the 50. I had to buy an extra one for my 500 Magnum. And I like these brass cleaning rods, but I believe this will actually work with the, uh, the Glock rod. I never tried it. If you didn't have another rod, yeah, you can thread that in there. It's kind of tight, but it'll work. Why don't we use my brass rod here? And then you want to get yourself some uh, cleaning patches. These are real handy. You can cut your own, but it seems like these, for some reason, work better than if you just cut up an old pair of underwear or something. And how the jag works is you there's a point here that you puncture the center of the pad. Some of these our patch rather. Some of these patches are actually round um, and you, you can uh, put some solvent on here or some ballastol or I'm not going to tell you what to use because you can do your own research and figure out. I, I use ballastol and once in a while Hoppy's number nine uh, less and less often though and you just push from the breech in. You can see that's it's a very little amount of dirt there. Actually what you're removing when you're using this is lead. You don't fire lead bullets, uh, non-jacketed bullets in your Glock. Uh, you can. I've done it. You take your chances with it though. If you fire more than about 200 of them uh, you might get the uh, what's known as the uh, kaboom. It's because the polygonal bore in Glocks and HKs, which is really good, does a great job for sealing the copper jacketed bullets. Um, it leads up with softer bullets. If you use real hard, hard cast bullets, you might be able to get away with it, but I'm not comfortable doing that. So I either use uh, copper plated bullets, and I don't push them too hard. I don't, you know, in my hand loads, um, or I'll just use uh, fully jacketed, like factory, you know the expensive kind of bullets and that's the whole reason that you people shoot lead is because it's uh, much cheaper it's about half the price so you got your cleaning jig and your boar snake um, I, I don't think the boar snake replaces the cleaning jig because I don't think the boar snake does a good enough job of getting copper falling out uh, that's what your hoppies number nine really does a good job on um, the oil again is uh, Slip 2000. That's just what I happen to be using right now. Um, I might change my mind a week from now, but uh, seems to be uh, some pretty good stuff. Put your Glock back together. You can't put it together wrong, so don't sweat it. Um, your recoil um, spring assembly can only go in one way because if you try to put it in backwards it won't come out 
and you rest the edge right there. Make sure you get it all the way onto the barrel lug. There's actually a little place for it to rest. It's not this uh, edge, it's deeper down right up against the barrel and you, you guide the slide. Actually the easy way to do this is this is the heavier part, the slide. You take your light frame and hold the thing upside down and get your uh, rails started. Everything should go really easy and it's everything should be good. Nothing should bind and you want to do a function check. That sounds good. It's not uh, gritty or anything like that. Replace your magazine if you choose. I put my magazines in my guns because I've already gotten to the range. Um, if you shoot action pistol, you have to take your mag out. And uh, you might actually get to the range and you got your box of ammo and your gun. And lo and behold, you don't have any magazines. And that would be a real bummer. Because you don't want to just, uh, you might think, well, I'll just drop one down the pipe and uh, fire it. You really shouldn't do that. The reason is because your extractor, instead of having your rim come up underneath it from the magazine straight up, you're actually forcing the extractor out and around the uh, head of the brass and when you slam it down you can actually chip the leading edge of your extractor doing that. So what else do I have to tell you? Um, I guess that would just about do it. If you have any questions, let me know and have fun shooting. Thanks for watching.